Hi, Founder fans. Jason here. Today's founder is William Samuel Johnson, a man who served in both the Stamp Act Congress and the Constitutional Convention, but had a little bout of loyalism along the way. So Johnson comes from one of the most prominent families in Connecticut, and as such, he was chosen as a representative to the Stamp Act Congress when Britain passed the Stamp Act, uh, to which many... Almost all of the colonists were really upset, uh, and he had many disagreements, as everyone else did, and Johnson actually helped write one of the three letters sent over to England. There was one sent to the House of Lords, one to the House of Commons, and one to the King, and Johnson helped write the one that went to the King, uh, and their grievances, once filed, worked, and they did get rid of the Stamp Act. Britain uh, and Parliament did pass the Declaratory Act, saying, we're not going to tax you this time, but we could if we wanted to. We don't want to, but we could. Anyway, a few years later, Johnson's actually sent to continue his streak of representation uh, by going over to London, where he was the agent for the colony of Connecticut, or their representative to the Crown and to Parliament. Now, they didn't have any real power, but they were the representatives, uh, and he became friendly with Benjamin Franklin about this time while they were both serving over there. It was here that Johnson realized that Congress or Parliament wasn't being malicious with these new taxes. They weren't purposely trying to attack the colonies, they were just ignor ignorant of how the colonists actually felt. Now, he returns to North America in 1771 and is pretty quickly elected to the Colonial Supreme Court. Uh, it's about this time, you know, a few years later, the American Revolution starts to break out and Johnson really is not about it. He thinks that a war and, and especially independence would be bad for both Great Britain and the American colonies. So he ends up resigning his position. He does go to Massachusetts after Lexington and Concord to speak directly to Thomas Gage to try and see if they can settle things. Now, they can't settle things, and Johnson basically, he was elected to the First Continental Congress as a delegate, but did not take his seat. He said, no, thank you. Uh, and as I said, he talked, he spoke with Gage. Because of these actions, uh, he was not very much trusted by many of the other colonists, especially the Patriots. Uh, so he sits out the war. He's really, he's not really a loyalist. He's what I like to call the forgotten third. Uh, about a third of the Americans were Patriots, about a third were loyalists, and about a third kind of sat back and said, I don't care, whoever wins, um, I just want to stay here when we're done. Uh, and that was more common, like I said, it's about a third of people, so it was pretty common to do what Johnson did. Not usually for someone of his renown in society, but he was so respected that after the war ends, he was asked to uh, stick around, excuse me there, <laughs> I didn't thought I didn't hit record for a second, uh, he was asked to stick around, and uh, eventually, in the 1780s, kind of all is forgiven, and he is then sent to the Continental Congress in the late 1780s. It's here that he sees many of the problems of the Continental Congress, uh, and he starts to also believe a stronger federal government is necessary, but he's also contacted by Vermont. Now, Vermont at this point had considered itself an independent nation for about a decade, and they only became an independent nation because they wanted to be the 14th state. Now, New York laid claims to Vermont, New Hampshire laid claims to Vermont, Connecticut laid claims to Vermont, and even Massachusetts laid claims to Vermont. Connecticut was the loosest of those three, had kind of the weakest claims, uh, and the people of Vermont, since they could not have a representative in the Continental Congress, they asked William Samuel Johnston, or, or Johnson, sorry, I don't know why I keep mispronouncing his name. Uh, they asked Mr. Johnson, or Dr. Johnson, as his honorary title, uh, his honorary degree titled him. They asked him, hey, can you represent Vermont for us in the Continental Congress? And he said yes. And later in his life, he would actually be granted a pretty vast tract of land in Vermont as a thank you for representing them when New York and New Hampshire wouldn't let them become a state because they both wanted that property. It's in this scenario that Johnson then goes to the Constitutional Convention. He is in favor of a federal government, and it's interesting, he fights for the small states. He's in favor of the New Jersey plan early on in the convention. He actually thinks a federal government would be best for protecting the smaller states from the encroachment of their larger neighbors. Now, eventually, he does get on board with Roger Sherman and Oliver Wolcott's uh, Connecticut compromise, aka the Great Compromise, and as another person from Connecticut, it makes sense he'd be on board, and he helps push that through. He's also one of five people put on the Committee of Style, 
uh, in the final days of the Constitutional Convention to help literally write the Constitution, uh, which he does help to do. After this, he is then elected as an inaugural member of the United States Senate, uh, if representing Connecticut, though it doesn't appear he really attended very often, but still he has that honor. I will also note, being born in 1727, uh, he was older than most of his contemporaries. He was, he was already in his 60s. He was actually the oldest senator in the inaugural Senate. Uh, Johnson then kind of retires to become president of King's College, what we now know as Columbia. He spends about 12 years there and then retires kind of permanently, but lives into his, almost into, into his 90s. He lives to be uh, 92 years old. So he's got a good long life, especially for the time period. And that is a really brief overview of William Samuel Johnson, who, even though he had that little bit of loyalism in the middle, you know, the Stamp Act Congress is super important because certain connections he made. You know, he would be at the Constitutional Convention with other members from other states that were also 22, 23 years earlier at the Stamp Act Congress. So uh, an important kind of glue, man, glue person uh, tying everything together. And I also forgot to note that he was kind of widely respected. That's why he was able to make his way back in. Uh, I even read a quote how people in the North were surprised how much Southerners loved him at the Constitutional Convention because they had never met him before. Uh, and he had like rumors of loyalism, but everyone just really got along with him. So he's a really important American founder whose name is kind of obscured, but now you know. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit like so more people can find out about the channel. And if you are new here, subscribe. I put out videos seven days a week where I don't usually lose concentration and become curious whether or not I've hit record. So thank you for watching. I'll be back with another founder for you tomorrow.